ask you the question, what education do you think you need to become a pet groomer? Would you be shocked if I told you the answer was absolutely nothing? It's the biggest piece of dog shit that I have ever heard. That's actually the truth for most places in the world. Now I'm actually Canadian. Canada! And there is nothing stopping Joe Schmo here from buying a pair of clippers off of Amazon and asserting themselves to be a professional groomer on their local Facebook pages. That's scary, right? <laughs> I'm in danger! And without knowledge and experience, it could really wind up being a terrible set of circumstances. So if you're legitimately interested in becoming a real, honest, professional pet groomer, or maybe you're just curious, I'll walk you through the process, break down what we make, what we pay, and also a few things to consider before you make the leap. So I'll start off with how I myself became a pet groomer, and bear in mind, a lot has changed since I got my certificate, as it's been well over a decade since then. So I attended a privately owned and operated certification program by groomers who at the time had been grooming for about 30 years plus, and I believe both of those lovely ladies, if not at least one of them, might still be grooming, which is kind of mind-blowing. You just blew my mind. <laughs> and if they're not grooming, they definitely do still own their salon, so perhaps they're like retired or semi-retired, somewhere along those lines. But anyways, so the program I took was about a six month-ish course, I would say ish, because you didn't really move forward unless you were comfortable and they were satisfied. So there was actually one nice, really nervous girl who had been there for months before me and she was actually still there when I left because she just really lacked a whole lot of confidence and felt as if she wasn't ready to go out into the real world of grooming yet. So I hope that she's out there. I hope she got that confidence. I do wish her the best. So in this time frame, I did take not only their basic pet stylist course that they offered, but I did take the additional advanced hand scissoring course as well, which was probably maybe only a month addition to the six months program. So essentially this was more of a mentoring situation than anything really. And I will say that when I did get out and go into the real world and get my first job in a grooming salon, my boss really took me under her wing because even with all of that, that didn't necessarily mean I was ready to be out there on my own. Like I couldn't have just gone out and open my own salon because there was a lot of fundamental pieces that I was just missing. Some of the things that really helped was she critiqued my work and gave me pointers and tips, which really did help me learn on the job, which is super important. So I didn't just come out of school and I was ready to go really. There was just so much more hands-on real life circumstances that you really need someone who has more knowledge and skill than you to be there to help you in the beginning. Plus, this was a higher end in Toronto, so expectations of my work were pretty high, but I will say this was an asset to me in the end, and I really appreciate my time there. So when I hear of online certification, or even there's been this one day course kind of making its round on the internet, I'm actually a bit repulsed because I know firsthand that is just not enough and people going around and opening up their own businesses with no one to help mentor them on the job is a bit scary to me. So let's skip out on those courses because you are not gonna properly learn what you need to and get to the ones that will actually get you started on the correct path. Let's talk about apprenticeships. And this is essentially the route that I went down from what I was explaining earlier. There's gonna be a lot of places that offer these type of learning scenarios. And in Ontario, Canada, they did end up changing the rules from when I went to school. It did change, I believe, shortly after. But this can apply, I believe, to other places as well. But here, you can no longer offer apprenticeship programs that people have to pay for without getting government approval first. A salon down the road without approval can still offer apprenticeship training, but they need to pay the student. And this is for everything. Any hours they are working in the salon, learning or not, they need to be compensated for their hours. So. This is generally how larger corporations get away with not being a government certified program here. But 
I'll get into corporate settings in just a minute. So here you can either go through an apprenticeship as an employee and you will be paid likely minimum wage and work your way up to learning how to groom dogs, likely starting out as a bather. And this can be a really great way to learn as you will likely learn a lot of those day-to-day -day skills, including administrative end, which I will say I was not taught, but I did learn it on the job. But it would have been a really nice kind of transition to have that in my program so I could learn the basics of handling clients. But here are some of the downsides of this route. First off, it can take a really long time to learn this way. As you are an employee, you will likely have a lot of other duties that you're gonna need to take care of before you have time to learn. And this can be a problem because I've worked in salons, just regular salons that have offered on the job training, which promises starting out as a bather and working up to being a groomer. And let me tell you, they do not learn hardly anything in the day to day. There may be times on occasion that they were given time to pull up a stool and learn, but a lot of the time those employees ended up leaving before they even learned to shave pads on a dog, which is super bare minimum. That's because just a lot of people, there's a lot of turnover, a lot of people quit. They just don't feel like they're advancing fast enough, which is fair. Plus another thing that I noticed was a lot of them are tossed into circumstances of learning without any sort of lesson or training because the owner of the salon was overbooked and they needed the student's help to get those dogs out the door. This though is not to say that this is going to be everyone's situation or experience. I'm sure there are plenty of groomers who have learned this way without any of these issues, but I think it's important to point out that this way of learning is very dependent on who is doing the teaching and what their idea of apprenticeship is and what they might expect from you in the day to day. I will say that starting out as a bather in a salon is probably going to give you a great idea of whether or not this is a good career option for you though because like any job you can quit and this way you have nothing invested. You haven't spent any money, in fact you've been paid. So good way to kind of get your foot in the door, see if you actually enjoy it. Now if you have gone the route of a paid apprenticeship the way that I did, you likely invested money, likely thousands, since most private programs run anywhere from $2,000 up to $8,000 on average. I am sure there's some out there that will be more, some that will be less, but anyways, that's not a small amount of money. The good news on this though, is that you are more likely going to learn what you need to from these places, unlike what we were talking about before, particularly if the program banks you a large amount of actual working hours, then this is gonna be extremely beneficial. You're gonna be guaranteed that time working with the dogs, practicing haircuts, and that's gonna be essential. Most of these programs on average actually want you to spend about 300 to 1,000 hours clocked in learning and practicing. But as I had mentioned in my own experience, there is flaws. I didn't learn much in terms of the administrative side and that is really a huge part of grooming and owning your own business. As well, much like college, unless you have a large amount of money set aside, you are not going to be paid in this time frame and will likely need to have a side job to keep you afloat. And this can be quite difficult to maintain proper work, school, life balance. Particularly since these courses run months and sometimes years, and I've heard groomers say that they spent two years in a college-based program, which yes, is sometimes an option. Certain colleges offer courses for pet grooming, which in my opinion is no different than a paid apprenticeship since the teachers in most cases are groomers themselves. All schools are not made equal and you can easily overpay for an apprenticeship that may not be as good as another that was for a cheaper price. So keep that in mind. I think a good rule of thumb is that a closer location that gives you the ability to learn hands on and has groomers who have a lot of experience and is in your price range is really the way to go. 
if you're looking at a school that is primarily online and you have to seek out a mentor or one that offers you a mentor to only look over your work, I think you're better off picking one that offers more in salon experience. I went Tuesdays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. to the salon where my school was located and learned on site every single day they were open. And as I said, when I got out and I worked in a salon with a lady who still acted much like a mentor to me, I was having that hands-on experience that was really important. Okay, so I mentioned it earlier, let's talk about corporate settings for apprenticeship. We're talking about the PetSmarts, the Petco, all those big box stores that offer training. So they function a lot like a paid apprenticeship. And I mean ones that do pay you, not ones that you pay for. So in my opinion, these can be a lot better in terms of consistency when it comes to guaranteeing that you will learn on the job and be promoted up the ladder from a bather to a prep, to assistant, or to an actual full-time groomer. So just a lot more consistency on moving up, which is important. Now. These often come with a contract and most of them have contracts for a time frame in which you need to work for them. And also typically you're going to sign a non-compete for a certain radius in which you cannot work for other grooming shops after your contract is complete and during your contracts specified dates as well. So you can't have a side job and work down the street at another salon as well to supplement your income in some cases. You might have to go outside of the radius to find another job. Now, from what I understand, I am not sure how enforceable these contracts truly are, particularly the non-compete portion, since I know a handful of groomers who did get training through big box stores and then went on to subsequently break those contracts and no legal action was taken or pursued in any form. They may just be essentially to scare the employees into sticking around since they've invested money into them. And I'm gonna say likely they've got a high turnaround for groomers as well, but you know, just be careful. You might wanna have a lawyer or some legal representation. Take a look over the contracts before you sign anything and make any decisions. The other downside to this is because you're considered an employee, you are likely going to need to groom a greater number of dogs in order to meet a quota, essentially. So what they're looking for is for you to turn out more dogs in order to reimburse them for paying you for your apprenticeship. Does that make sense? Now I'm sure that this varies depending on your location and there may be some where this doesn't happen, but generally speaking, you gotta earn your keep per se. Whereas a private salon that you pay for schooling, you are much more likely to work at a slower speed. In fact, just to give you kind of a comparison of what I'm saying here is when I was in school, I would often get to practice breed cuts on dogs who were getting a short haircut because the teachers would look over the haircut, give their comments and where you could improve and even show me firsthand correct what needed to be corrected all while I stood there and watched. But after I got the dog back, I shaved it down to the short length that the owners wanted. But as a corporate setting, they're so busy and as an employee, you don't really have the luxury of wasting time giving a dog a haircut twice. Okay, finally, I know I said I wouldn't really talk about online courses, but I will point out these programs are not all the same and I am sure there are some out there that are far superior to others. but. The general idea behind the ones that actually have any value is that you do the online portion of learning and then you find dogs locally to groom and submit photos to your online teachers. But I'm sure you can see why that's flawed. Let's be real, a snapshot of a dog's cut and seeing it in motion are two very different things. And the hands-on portion of having groomers with decades of experience show me where I could improve in real life and in action is just so much more different. And being able to have someone instruct you step by step is just so much more invaluable. So sometimes these programs can be expensive as well, but in my opinion, a high price tag is likely 
not worth it. Maybe if it was cheap enough and you lived somewhere completely inaccessible, this might be a viable option, but I'd say avoid this method if you can. Let's talk about what you can expect to make as a groomer. And the answer is likely not as much as you think. Groomers tend to make similar wages to other tradespeople. I myself charge $50 an hour, but keep in mind not only does this vary based on location and is dependent on your experience and your position. So for myself, this is my wage as a business owner. I would be expected to make less if I were an employee. And in most cases, if you're the owner, or if you're a subcontractor, you likely don't have benefits or like health insurance, a pension, bonuses, other perks. So even though your hourly wage is higher, you are actually not pocketing all of that money. In fact, in between paying for water, heating, electricity, shampoo, repairs, and tool maintenance, you're probably making a lot less. For an employee just starting out, you're likely going to start at about minimum wage or slightly more until you gain more experience and speed, but this is also variable. So I went to Google and Google told me that in the United States, you can expect an average hourly wage of $23 an hour, but could be as low as just over $9 or as high as nearly $35. So the yearly average salary is 47,659. Again, that's probably not as high as some people probably assume. Probably some of my clients. Now let's be real. For what we deal with, this salary often doesn't feel like enough. We deal with biting, scratching, pooping, peeing, flailing, to name a few things, all while using sharp tools and trying not to injure them. And it is an expensive job in terms of upkeep and products, as well as startup is extremely expensive, just buying all the tools to get going. And it can be extremely physically and mentally draining. It can even cause dangerous health conditions like rumors alone. And I couldn't even begin to tell you the amount of time over my career where I was in tears or nearly in tears from seeing cases of neglect or when you're just struggling to get a job done on a dog who is, you know, having a hard time themselves, it can be very difficult. And sometimes the client doesn't understand either, and that is difficult too. So, you know, it's a nuanced balance between people's emotions and dog's emotions as well. But all that bad stuff aside, the people in the industry are generally phenomenal people and they are in it for the love of dogs. And the day-to-day -day joy that my own clients do bring me is what makes everything feel better. And it is definitely not all bad all the time. I don't want you to think that. In fact, if you want to see my day-to-day -day life in the grooming salon, check out this video right here and see why this job is my greatest passion. <laughs> Thank you.